If you're worried about becoming obsolete in the face of AI, then inaction is the riskiest move you can take right now. We need to adapt to stay relevant. Hey guys, my name's Warren. I've been a software engineer for over 14 years. And today we're talking about the five things that you should be learning right now to stay ahead of the curve in tech. So the first point I wanna discuss is high level problem solving. Now, of course, the art of writing code is starting to be replaced by AI and it's clearly very capable of writing pretty decent, highly scoped code. But our goals of writing code are still the same. We still want to piece it all together to build ever complex software. We still need to convert user requirements into working software. And anyone who works in tech already knows that what a user wants versus what a user actually needs is a massive difference. So we need to be the people that can actually convert those user requirements into the correct functional software. You know, as a software engineer or anyone that works in tech, how much time do you actually spend in a day just writing code? The job of a software engineer is far more than just sitting there typing on a keyboard. We're sitting in meetings, we're collecting user requirements, we're doing a whole bunch of stuff. And this high level problem solving obviously goes far beyond just the code that you write in your editor. And this is the type of thing that humans are really, really good at and AIs suck at. Mainly the reason being that every single piece of software you work on is completely unique. And AI is obviously trained on pre-existing data on the internet. When you push it into a corner, it performs worse and worse. So those areas that are left when we're working on completely novel and new things are left up to us as high level problem solvers to solve. It's strange because we're in this weird place at the moment where we're building the same quality of software, but we're doing it far more efficiently with the help of AI. But I think as the competition starts to become more fierce, that landscape will change. The standard of what is average software will drastically increase as these new technical capabilities start to soak into the industry. You know, if you look at a website from 10, 20 years ago, it's almost laughable by today's standards. Can you imagine what that will look like in another 10, 20 years from now? Do you think we're just going to carry on building the exact same things? So I think this idea that AI will just solve all of our problems is completely false. I think we're just going to drastically increase our standards in line with artificial intelligence. The second point is leadership. And whilst the makeup of a team might change, maybe there'll be less junior engineers and midweights in a team. You know, we're starting to see that trend already with some people saying that they're hiring less junior and midweights, keeping all the senior engineers, but now they're using AI to potentially move faster. Whether you believe that or not, that's up to you. But it's clear that the structure of teams are changing. But the thing that remains is those teams still need good, solid leadership. So if you can work to developing your leadership skills and still orchestrating all the individual parts of a team, then that will definitely be an area that you can accelerate in and continue to grow in far into the future. I really don't see a future where AI is going to take a leadership role. So I think that is a pretty protected area right now in tech. Now, the third point is communication. And it doesn't matter how good your ideas are or how good you are technically. If you can't communicate your ideas effectively to other members in your team or customers, then your ideas are not going to go anywhere. I think communication actually creeps into all areas. It's not something that's specific to tech, but it is still a really great complementary skill to have with good technical skills. If you want to hire good people, if you want to champion new technologies, if you want to share ideas with management or the rest of the team, communication is the way that you actually get those points across. And without communication, it doesn't matter how good you are technically, you don't want to be that one dimensional person that can't get their ideas across. Think of everyone that you've ever looked up to. They're good communicators. It could just be people you've seen on YouTube. It could be CEOs. It could be amazing technologists. All of those people have that one thing in common that they're really effective communicators. So if you want to aspire to be that kind of person, then communication is a skill you definitely need to start building up. In fact, one of the main reasons that I started this YouTube channel is because I wanted to improve my communication skills. Like six months ago, I could not talk on camera at all. So if you do want to improve your communication skills yourself, I think talking on camera is a really good way to do it. And that can seep into many areas of life. I'm a way better public speaker now, for example, just due to the fact I've learned this skill of talking on camera. So even if talking on camera isn't the end goal, I think it's a really good way to practice in private at your communication skills. At the start, you might only be able to talk for like one or two minutes without losing your train of thought. But as time goes on, you'll start to be able to talk for longer and longer periods of time until the point where you have a really decent train of thought whilst you're speaking. So if you want to learn to market, if you want to learn to hire, if you want to learn to get hired, if you want to learn to champion new technologies and get your points across, 
the communication is a skill you need to learn. So the fourth point is architecture. And this is kind of similar to the high level problem solving point geared purely towards the technical side of things. Now, AI can, of course, help with this. In fact, when I'm architecting new systems now, I'll often bounce ideas off ChatGPT to try and understand the best typical standards to build a certain type of software. As architects, we're designing complex technical systems to fit an ever-changing landscape. No two pieces of software are exactly the same. So whilst you can bounce ideas off ChatGPT to get a general feel of what is the best approach to a specific piece of architecture, that architecture will always have to adapt to a real world problem. Often in architecture, the technical choice we make isn't always what's fastest, what's cheapest. It's about understanding more things like how the system currently works, what are the technical skills of our current team? And you know, if all software was just the same and all requirements were just the same, then every company would just use a pre-built white label app. All software would exist already if all problems were the same, but that's not the case and you need huge teams of software engineers still to build unique complex software for unique and complex problems. That is never gonna change. And as I said before, those problems are likely to become far more complex and far more ambitious as time goes on. So learning good software architecture and learning how complex systems interconnect the smaller parts is gonna be a really important skill to have moving forward. Now, the fifth point I wanna make is deep knowledge of data structures and algorithms. Now this can be seen as a slightly controversial one because of course AI has fantastic knowledge of data structures and algorithms already, but you know what it can't do? It can't write novel algorithms. And I don't think with current technology, if we continue to scale our LLMs in the direction we're going, will they ever be able to solve novel problems? They're trained on pre-existing data and they're effectively prediction engines that are just predicting the next word based on the training set they already have. Novel problems can only be solved through conscious thought and that's not gonna be an area that AI is gonna be able to help us with anytime soon. We still need software engineers to actually build those LLMs and actually build these algorithms in many industries. So I do believe deep knowledge of data structures and algorithms and computer science is gonna be a really important skill moving forward. You know, it already seems obvious to me where the trend is going there's certain types of skills that are falling out of favor. Building basic marketing sites, for example, you don't really need that anymore. But that really fits into the area of repeatable problems. And repeatable problems are going to be replaced by automation as they have been in the past and as they will continue to be in the future. Novel problems are the things that we can't automate. And I don't think AI is necessarily gonna help us with those problems anytime soon. So these are the points that I'm trying to make in this video. So that was high level problem solving, leadership, communication, architecture, and deep knowledge of data structures and algorithms. If you like this video, guys, and want to see more like it, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.